what a blow this has been to all these bars and restaurants which wrap tightly around the stadium. Their livelihoods really depend on Major League Baseball and the Cubs. And in the meantime, it sure is awfully quiet here at Wrigley Field as everyone sort of just settles in and hunkers down for the effects of all this. They're leaving all kinds of things here. And you know, even though all of these kind of look the same, all the flowers, there's a teddy bear there, the posters, the um, balloons, and each of these candles, they really do tell a story. Each one tells a story of the individual who thought enough to come up here today and last night to leave this. And that's the message that you're getting from a lot of people here. The most controversial presidential primary election in the nation barrels ahead today here in Wisconsin despite the state's shelter-in-place order. Thousands of National Guardsmen have been called in to polling sites like this one because so many poll workers bailed out out of coronavirus fears. Uh, just disgust, that's all. I think disgust sums it up pretty much here in Chicago. I'm on the street, actually, where this whole incident apparently happened back on January 29th. It all happened, police say, underneath the building where Smollett lives. And you can see it right there. It's a tall building right there. And police say it was back there in that tunnel area that uh, Smollett and the two brothers carried out this fake attack underneath a surveillance camera. The problem was the camera wasn't pointed in the right direction. He said some things that I can't say on the air, actually. Last <laughs> night at the uh, candlelight vigil, he used some not-so-pleasant language that begins with an F to describe uh, how he felt about all this. Uh, a reporter asked him, hey, what can be done uh, to prevent shootings like this? And he basically said, what do you think should be done or can be done? He's laid so much blame at the foot of President Trump. In fact, he said today that President Trump is not welcome here, should not come here. But the protests up to this point have been fairly organized. This one is not. It is, as you see, fairly chaotic. I'm going to talk to this gentleman here, Greg. Greg, Greg, come in. quick question for you. Are these protests working? Yes, people are going about their business, but it is tense here, and I'll set the scene for you. I'm right here at the very bottom of that bike path where this uh, truck went through yesterday. You can see the bike path. That's the end of the bike path right there, and police have sealed it off, as you can tell right there. This whole area is sealed off, basically, and we're, by the way, we're just near the one World Trade Center right there. We don't know if that played a significant role in this attack. Michael Brooks spent the day after El Paso's worst ever mass shooting pleading with authorities for help finding his adult son. My son had Facebook my, my niece yesterday. I said he had been shot. He was at Walmart been shot when the sh shooting happened. My niece went to ask him again. The phone hung up. Then came up here. They won't give me no information. I'm going to all the hospitals. I just don't want the bad news. We never heard back from Michael, but he headed here to a school which had been used as a place for reunifying separated families and is now a place for open grieving. Trying to digest it, trying to, to take it in, and um, they have survivor's guilt. You know, survivor's guilt sucks. And like Michael Brooks, all of El Paso is searching for answers. Shooting survivor Kendall Long also pleaded with authorities to get his wife's truck back a truck she needs for work from the locked down Walmart. The memories of what the couple went through won't soon go away. And they were shouting, run, there's a shooter, he's shooting, and they were running inside the building. But the city is also trying to move forward. People lined up on Sunday to give blood for the shooting victims in the hospital. This location saw hundreds of donors who waited for hours on a scorching day to give blood. Folks even turned up to give the donors free food. Just to do my part in the community and give back to the victims and their families, you know, just to do my little part. And with nothing else to do, a lot of folks just started dropping off flowers at the Walmart. And Gabriel Gonzalez hopped into a truck, proudly showing the flags of America and Mexico, and started doling out water. I still feel in shock, like, I, I really don't think that this happened here, but, I mean, it did. So we're just trying to help out. And their thoughts on the shooter? He's someone to pity, to forget about, who failed to break them. He just has hatred that's fueled off of really nothing. He doesn't know how these people are here. There's a bunch of Hispanics that are going to stay here. Might as well get used to it. Andy Rosgen, I-24 News, El Paso, Texas. But built by and for the white Christian people of this nation. Arthur Jones is a longtime Nazi-supporting, Holocaust-denying anti-Semite, and he doesn't care what you think. Do you deny the Holocaust ever happened? I just showed you all kinds of proof to, to 
prove to anybody with, with uh, ability to think rationally that the Holocaust is what I said it was before. It's nothing more than an international extortion racket to bleed and blackmail, extort, and terrorize the enemies of the Jews into silence or subservience. Jones is also the Republican nominee for Congress in this suburban Chicago district. I'm not criticizing Jews as Jews. I'm criticizing the so-called Holocaust survivors who have been proven over and over again to be outright liars, and they're liars for profit. Jones and I had to meet in a park because no one in town, not even his own landlord, wants him around talking openly about his beliefs. But the animosity against Jews in particular. I mean, that's terrifying. Animosity from where? From you. It's not animosity. I'm just standing for the truth. The Illinois Republican Party, which still clings to its standard bearer, Abraham Lincoln, disavows Jones, demands he drop out of the race, and calls him abhorrent. The feeling is mutual. The Republican Party always put up some gutless wonder to drain votes away from me. Well, this, what they, they've set up here is what's called, like, I call it the two-party, Jew-party, queer-party system. So how did this happen? Jones has run and lost numerous political races. Two years ago, the Republican Party chased him away by invalidating many of his petition signatures in the race for this same seat. But this time, Republicans didn't even bother putting up their own candidate. And Jones quietly gathered enough valid signatures by walking door to door, presenting himself as a traditional social conservative, a veteran, and an opponent of foreign wars. He did not mention his beliefs. Here, you, you're here, on the record. Here, you here's said Ford's that you don't records, believe the Holocaust. Ford's records of wow. Holocaust survivors to get a special Social Security well, benefit. His beliefs did become big national news a few weeks before the March primary vote, and yet even then, running unopposed, he still managed to pick up almost 21,000 votes in the primary. That's a depressing thought for the regional director of the Anti-Defamation League, which has been tracking and pushing back against Jones for years. The ADL's leader says that while the group remains non-political, state Republicans might have some soul-searching to do. As, as leadership, they need to make a decision in terms of where they want their party to go and what kind of messaging they want out there. The state Republican Party declined an on-camera interview, but they have said they will put forth their own Republican write-in candidate for November. That's a face-saving move that will needlessly cost them, since no Republican was ever expected to win anyway in this heavily Democratic district. And if he loses, Jones promises you won't hear the last of him. He's writing a book. Andy Roshan, I-24 News, Chicago. If you're a famous comedian today, then you probably walked through these doors yesterday. That's a young Bill Murray and Rachel Dratch and Tina Fey and Steve Carell. Kids with big dreams on Chicago's Second City Theater stage, honing their improv skills for future stardom. Baker. Okay, here's how we bake the cake. Oh, no! Oh, I spilled it! But on this night at Second City, the performers are teens and young adults with autism learning improv skills to bring them out of their shells. Souffle, octopus with rice and chocolate inside. Oh my God! <laughs> who would have thought that improv performers who live largely outside themselves could reach kids who live largely trapped inside themselves? The heart of improv, it's just saying yes to another person. It's just saying, I see you and I'm here with you in this moment. Nothing else in the world matters. Dan, get into a pose this time, Brad. That's your pose? Not yet. All right, I'm gonna count down to three. Three, two, perfect. Second City started offering these weekly classes several years ago, and the change in students over time is sometimes dramatic. Zach Shields occasionally huddles in a corner all by himself, but when he's called on to perform, look out. Ugh, look at the but that woman actually, actually was smoking and I lost control. Ugh. It's great. I have shows that you have to be creative. In fact, I think I've been more creative than I've ever been. Zach's mom loves watching his confidence grow. 
Zach goes to college, so in his classes, he's the first one to raise his hand. If he knows something, he will talk to the other students and try to engage them, and that's something new. These classes aren't tailored just to these students. These are the same improv classes that anybody off the street would get. And as Second City performers have been taught for decades, failure is always an option. One of the things we learn when we're improvising is how to fail how to fall flat on your face and realize that nobody's going to call you out for it. Ultimately, these kids probably won't become famous. Instead, just better focused for a starring role of their own on the grand stage of life. Andy Rose, I-24 News, Chicago.